Petzval optical system with five lenses, corrected up to 44 mm, 54 mm aperture, and a focal length of f243 mm, and all of this for under $600. I can tell you that any other telescope with these features on the market is close to almost double this price. My name is Luis Miguel Azorin, and I welcome you once again to Natural Portraits, the channel dedicated to nature and natural photography in the broadest sense we can imagine. We're going to test what is possibly the most accessible quintuplet apochromatic telescope on the market. If you're a regular follower of the channel, you know that I've been collaborating with the Suboni brand for years. And why have I collaborated with them for all these years? This brand has evolved from making almost toy-like telescopes to quality apochromatic telescopes for astrophotography at the level of other established brands, at a fraction of their price. And they continue with their philosophy of developing and evolving their products to what we have here, which I would say is their most serious telescope so far, the SV555, a Petzval quintuplet f bow. For astrophotography of large celestial fields, corrected up to 44 mm, meaning for larger formats than full frame, without the use of flatteners. Well, we have a high quality tube in front of us, especially suitable for travel, because the OTA, that is the tube without the rings, weighs only 1.9 kilos. We're talking about a very lightweight tube with a modern harmonic mount, making it perfectly suitable to take with us in the cabin of an airplane. For example, without the need to check it in. I have to say that this is one of the aspects that attracted me the most to it, and the reason I decided to give it a try. And you probably know that in April 2025, I'm going with Nestor Rodan and a small group of attendees to the Atacama Desert in Chile and the Uyuni Salt Flat in Bolivia. We're going to photograph the best night sky in the world, and this little one along with the AM5 is coming with me. And if you want to join us, there are still a few spots available. In the description and in the first comment, you have a link with all the information about this trip. The SV is a slightly different concept from what we usually understand as a telescope and is clearly inspired by other telescopes like the ASCAR FMA series. It's a mix between an astronomical telescope and a photographic lens. In fact, we could easily adapt it to a camera with the corresponding T-ring. But the most distinctive feature is that in this tube we have a variable aperture a diaphragm that goes from f4.5, its largest aperture, to f22, something we find in almost any photographic lens, and which can be useful in astrophotography to achieve even smaller and more defined stars in bright objects. However, as I mentioned, this is not something common in telescopes. We also find a 72mm front filter thread, and it comes standard with an integrated and graduated rotator along with a typical helical focus system found in photographic lenses. But what makes this tube actually a telescope? Let's start with the rings and the Vixen-style dovetail. In the box, we will find a system of anodized red rings along with a Vixen-style dovetail for transport, which also serves as a support to install, for example, an auto-guiding system or a device A. It comes all disassembled, so we'll have to put it together ourselves, but it's not difficult at all. We will also find everything needed to adapt a ZWO EAF focuser. The focuser is located at the bottom of the telescope, so we will find a chute to lift the tube higher and leave the necessary space to install the focuser. And we will find the telescope inside a padded transport case. And with all this set up, we'll end up with something like this that I have here, about 3 kilo of a Petzval apochromatic quintuplet, ready to adapt a camera, mount it on our mount or tracker, and start photographing large fields of deep sky. And that's exactly what we're going to do right now. Let's pack it in the backpack and head out to the field to do some astrophotography.
well the equipment is set up and ready to start the astrophotography session and the review of this SUV Boney SV5555 tube in a practical situation. The first thing I have to say is that I love how all the equipment looks compact with a mount like the Swoam, a harmonic mount. It's a perfectly portable setup, and I would say it's completely suitable for taking it with us anywhere in the world. And this tube, as we know, is super light. With a mount of this type, I think we would have no problem setting everything up in the cabin with us on a plane trip. So what I'm going to do tonight is point to the area of Orion, specifically to the Horsehead Nebula and the Barnard Loop next to M, a region of the sky that I love. But first, we're going to do a super quick alignment and then we'll start the session. The session has started with the first capture, and it looks good. We're having quite a bit of wind tonight, with some strong gusts of wind. In fact, the auto guiding is showing an error of 1.43 arc seconds, which is a lot for this mount, but it's an acceptable figure considering the focal length and resolution of this camera. However, I saw peaks over 3 arc seconds of error, and that is concerning. What I have done is lower the exposure of the auto guiding system, because basically if we have gusts of wind, that are making the mount vibrate, and we have an exposure time on the auto guiding that is too long, what the auto guiding system does is go crazy because it is continually trying to correct. So, with shorter exposure times, what we achieve is that the auto guiding system makes faster measurements and doesn't overcorrect due to the wind. This way, I get perfectly acceptable auto guiding statistics for this equipment, and we can operate smoothly. And I have to say, this first capture looks really good. Let's see. I'm going to check especially the corners of the photograph, which is where I'm most concerned. And well, I see perfectly round stars. Just a reminder, this is a Petval optical system, meaning it has five lenses and a completely corrected field up to 40, 40 millimeters in diameter. So we have perfectly round stars across the entire field of view at maximum aperture f4.5. And as for aberrations and color, well, I'm seeing reddish, orange colored stars here. I don't see any kind of halo, chromatic aberration, nothing purple, nothing bluish. I really see a very, very good image that I'm really liking so far. So let's continue with the session. For now, I've set up 36 captures, three hours of integration for this region of the Orion constellation. And let's see what we get in this session. Well, the session is going perfectly. In fact, now that I've adjusted the exposure time in the auto guiding system, I see that the images are even better, with even smaller and more focused stars. So, everything is perfect to continue with the session. Small inconveniences, not inconveniences, but little difficulties that I've encountered with this tube. It's quite complicated to get a good focus point with it, even with the EAF auto focusing system from Swansig. And as you have seen, the focusing system of this tube is helical, and we need a belt that connects to the motor. Due to the movement of the belt, the focuser itself, and the helical focusing system itself, we have a fairly pronounced backlash. If we add to this that the stars are also very small and reaching the exact focus point is somewhat complicated, then I have to say that at least the first time, it is very complex to reach the exact focus point. In fact, I had to spend quite a while moving the focuser back and forth. I set it to the infinity point, where I thought the focus point would be, but that's not the case. I had to adjust it quite a bit until I reached a more or less correct point where the focuser could perform a proper focusing routine. I think I'm not going to move it from there. And since the focus point data is recorded in the focuser, the next time I connect this equipment, with ACR Plus, I will already have that focus point, and in theory, it will simply be launching a focus routine. But for now, the equipment is focused, it's taking photos, and it really looks great. Well, I'm calling it a wrap, the session, because an incredible wind has picked up. In fact, I've had to spend the whole session battling a bit with the wind, 
but right now the gusts are huge. The auto guiding statistics are absolutely crazy. And as you can see, I even have the car here. I had to bring it during the session to shield the equipment from the wind, but now there's a real risk that the equipment could fall over with some of these gusts. So, oh, the session hasn't gone exactly as I expected. I've been able to capture about two hours of light integration from this region of the sky, which I think will allow me to get a photograph, maybe not as good as I would have liked, but well, conditions dictate, and as you can see, not everything goes perfectly during the sessions. Still, we've been able to review how this little telescope performs, the image quality it gives us, the color fidelity it offers, and all that's left is to check what we've finally been able to capture from this session.